Back in 2000, the entire development of Hockey World would be changed from a Crosby lawsuit. Because at the time, Sidney Crosby was 13 and dominating his youth competition. So much so, that it was beginning to hinder his personal development. Thus, he and his parents would submit a request for Crosby to play U17. However, they would be denied which would lead to the Crosbys suing Nova Scotia minor hockey. But they would lose. The next season, Crosby would make that team, and to nobody's surprise, he would score 193 points. And this dominance would lead to the opposition purposely targeting Crosby for injury, not to mention the harassment he would receive from the parents. Combine this with the bitterness from the lawsuit, Crosby would pack his bags and head south of the border where he would join Shattuck St. Mary's, an untraditional path that would change the way people view prospect development. Because soon after this, prospects such as Jonathan Taves, Nathan McKinnon, Clayton Keller, or perhaps next year's first overall pick, Macklin Celebrini, would all opt to play for Shattuck. Because keep in mind, the mindset was always to get drafted into the CHL and hopefully get drafted into the NHL. And this Crosby lawsuit leading him to play for Shattuck would also lead him to nearly committing to North Dakota, where he would have played college hockey instead of returning to the QMJHL. Ultimately, he would opt to return to Halifax. But the optics of the situation, without a question, led to the implementation of the exceptional status rule, where players as young as 14 could now be drafted and play in the CHL. Which, let's be honest, is absurd, as players in the CHL are as old as 21, playing against some kids who are 70, 80 pounds smaller. This photo of Jet Deschamps would go viral this past summer. And for some perspective, this right here is an 18 year old Aaron Ekblad. Do you get the point? As there is a lot of physical maturity that takes place between the ages of 14 to 21, it could be the difference between a child and a grown man. Like, are you kidding me? But here's the thing, to be declared exceptional, you need to be exactly that. Far beyond your age in terms of skill set and physicality. Quick aside here, but I just released the Maple Leafs team pack, where you are chasing a rookie Austin Matthews Young Guns, alongside of many awesome cards. My goal with these packs is to put upper deck to shame by providing great value in every pack. I only made 18 packs, so pick one up while they're still hot. Back to the video. The first player to be given exceptional status was John Tavares back in 2005 because after getting called up at age 14 to play in the OPJHL, which is the same age group as the OHL but a tier lower in terms of skill, and his performance was good enough to prove to the CHL that he was ready to take that next step. And well, Johnny T would have one of the most dominant OHL careers in league history. In fact, this man would set the all-time goal-scoring record with 215 goals in 247 games. In 2009, he would be drafted first overall. In 2018, he would make the shocking decision to sign with the Leafs. And as it stands, here is his career stats. Overall, he has been a great 1B, 2A center. Now, he doesn't have any hardware or player awards, and his career high was back in 2019, where he would put up 47 goals, 88 points. And in terms of a tier list, I'm also gonna make this a tier list video. I would put him in A tier, as he would never become that game-breaking, 100 point player but he has been a consistent point per game player his entire career only one player before him was granted exceptional player status john Tavares. sun county's aaron ekblad became the second today and is eligible for the upcoming ohl draft already being labeled as a chris pronger type defenseman Score! A four goal night for aaron ekblad. in 2011 Aaron Ekblad would be the first defenseman granted exceptional status. Because at the age of 15, Ekblad was a grown uh, uh man, sitting at 6 foot 3, 205 pounds. And after a respectable time in junior, Ekblad would be drafted first overall by the Florida Panthers. And in his first season, Ekblad would impress as he would finish with 12 goals, 39 points, and showed a strong defensive game, which was good enough to defeat Mark Stone and Johnny Goudreau for Calder. And since then, Ekblad has proved himself to be a legitimate top two defenseman. However, his injury history has been tough, which has been constantly causing gaping holes in the Florida Panthers blue line for quite some time. His best season was in 2022, 
with 57 points in 61 games. And on the tier list, I would rank him B tier. In 2012, we would see Connor McDavid granted exceptional status. And this one, this one was different, as McDavid was an underager playing in a U16 league where he would put up an astonishing 209 points in 88 games. McDavid had the most impressive minor league career since the likes of Mario Lemieux and Wayne Gretzky. And during his time in the OHL playing as a 15 year old, McDavid would set the league on fire with his best season being his draft year, where he would put up 120 points in 47 games. And if McDavid didn't break his hand or whatever he did, this man was on pace for 174 points. He would be drafted first overall, and has become one of the greatest players to ever grace the game of hockey. As he has 12 major awards, his best season was last year, as he would put up 153 points. As McDavid was given exceptional status for a reason, and not only has he lived up to the hype, he has surpassed every possible expectation. And of course, he is an easy S tier. In 2013, Sean Day would be granted exceptional status. However, he wasn't necessarily granted the status because of his ability, as rumors would come out that Sean Day was potentially going to commit to college hockey, which would cause the CHL to panic, as they did not want to lose a potential star. With that being said, just like Ekblad, he was a grown man in a child's body, on top of incredible skating ability. However, his OHL career was a bit of a train wreck. Now, he was on a terrible Steelheads team, but with 16 points and a minus 35 in 60 games, it was clear he wasn't quite ready. But that wasn't even the main problem, as it was reported that Sean Day would show up late and overweight to the Team Canada camp which would result in him never receiving another invite to Team Canada ever again. And by 2016, he would go from looking like a potential number one defenseman to falling to the third round of the draft, where the Rangers would draft him at pick number 81. And throughout the last seven years, Sean Day has bounced around the CHL, AHL, ECHL. In 2022, after putting up a respectable 40 points in the minors, Sean Day would make his NHL debut, where he would get two games with Tampa. But since then, he has been back in the minors. And without a doubt, Sean Day has not lived up to the exceptional status. With that being said, even though he has been a massive disappointment, he has played two more NHL games than any of us watching this video. If you have played in the NHL, slide into the DM, say what's up, get you on a video, and I would love to see a Sean Day comeback story. But considering the history, I have to put him in F tier. Valeno, you know, came into the season as one of the top prospects in the 2018 draft. And, you know, that, that slipped a little bit. He was, of course, the first Quebec League player ever to get exceptional status. In 2015, Joe Valeno would become the first player in QMJHL history to be granted exceptional status. However, rumor has it that he followed a similar suit as Sean Day as he was contemplating the NCAA route, which would push the Q to grant him exceptional status. As his minor league stats were not eye-popping, with 52 points in 41 games. Compare that to McDavid's stats, it's a far stretch. But keep in mind, it is in the league's best interest to retain special players, even if they aren't all necessarily generational talents. Hell, let's even take a look at Connor Bedard, as this man was selling out NHL arenas during his time with the Regina Pats. The amount of revenue a special player can generate is mind-blowing. And although not mind-blowing numbers, Valeno would have a respectable time in the queue. 43 points in his rookie season, and 78 points in his draft year, where he would be drafted at 30 by the Detroit Red Wings. And since joining the league, to be honest, it hasn't been pretty, with the career-high 9 goals, 20 points last season. Now he is on pace for 2025 goals this season, which would be a big asset to the Red Wings' depth, but we are only 15 games into the season, and Valeno still has a lot to prove, so I would put him in D tier. Valeno can be a 20 goal scorer. He can make the move to C tier, but as it stands, we just haven't seen the upside. In 
2019, Shane Wright would be granted exceptional status. And my goodness, did this kid impress. Because after two straight exceptional status blunders, Shane Wright would join Kingston, would even surpass McDavid's rookie goal season total, with 39 goals, 66 points. All signs were pointing toward the fact that Shane Wright was not only the best player in his draft class, but he had the upside of a franchise player. However, the pandemic would happen. And this is where things get a bit odd, as the entire OHL season would be cancelled. Which really sucked, as some players didn't even get to play out their final season, and the other players would lose an entire year of development. We would see many top prospects go overseas to keep up their momentum. Connor Bedard would go to Sweden, Brant Clark, Brant would go to Slovakia, Mason McTavish went to Switzerland. Now, who knows what happened behind the scenes, but it was a bit odd for Wright to take off an entire season. Because in his draft year, Wright would put up 32 goals, 94 points, which don't get me wrong, is a great season. But considering his projection, you know, his rookie totals, 94 points for an exceptional status player was a letdown. With that being said, Shane Wright was still expected to go first overall. However, he would fall to the Kraken at pick number four. Just about everything that is required to get to a Stanley Cup. Resulting in the death stare. And in the past two seasons, Wright has bounced from the OHL, the AHL. He would play his final game last season, where we would see another incident. Gord, Bjorkstrand, Wright, scores! Shane Wright! In this season, Shane Wright is back in the minors. With that being said, 5 goals, 7 points in 8 games is a good sign. But considering his pedigree, Wright has been an odd spectacle. Do I think he's a bust? Absolutely not. So, I would put him C tier. The fact that he's producing in the minors is a good sign, and he definitely still has top 2 center upside. So expect to see him with the Kraken this season. In 2020, Connor Bedard would be the first player in WHL history to be granted exceptional status. And this one was crazy, as the WHL is known for its physicality. And considering the WHL already drafts at age 14, we are talking about a 7 year age gap for players in a physical league. And well, he would shatter all of the past exceptional status players point per game averages. Granted, he did only play 15 games due to the pandemic, but Connor Bedard would kick off his WHL career career with 12 goals, 28 points in 15 games as a 15 year old. The next season, he would hit 100 points. And in his draft year, Bedard would set the record for the point per game average as a 17 year old. As Bedard would put up 71 goals, 143 points in 57 games, where the Blackhawks would select him first overall. And so far, Bedard has shattered all of the past exceptional status players in point totals thus far. As I'm recording this video, he has 9 goals. 13 points in 13 games. So not only is Bedard nearly on pace for 60 goals. I mean, I don't think he gets there. Mid 40s is probably more realistic. But Connor Bedard is on pace to having the best rookie season from a first overall pick since Crosby and Ovechkin. This kid is a walking highlight reel, as his playstyle is like a combination of Kaprizov. Crosby, and Austin Matthews, and without a doubt, is going to be a very special player. Of course, it's early, Connor Bedard A tier, with the upside of joining McDavid in S tier. And I also think it's important to mention Matthew Savoy, as he would basically receive half exceptional status, because he, like Valeno and Sean Day, was rumored to say he was going to go to college. But the CHL would still deny him, with the exception that he was allowed to play half the season, where Savoy would put up 7 points in 22 games. He would go on to have a great draft year, where the Sabres would draft him 9th overall. But here's the thing, I completely understand players wanting to take that next step. But what's interesting is the fact that in all three cases of players threatening to go to the NCAA, or perhaps Shane Wright missing a season, because of the hype you generate among fans and scouts, it ends up only adding more pressure. Even if you do have a great draft season, if you don't not only live up to expectations, but succeed them, it has only resulted in their draft stock falling. So threatening to go to college has definitely been a cautionary tale. And lastly, in 2022, Michael Misa would be granted exceptional status. In his rookie season, 
Misa would put up an impressive 22 goals, 56 points in 45 games, which would surpass the production of McDavid. This season, however, he's been off to a slow start with 19 points in 16 games. With that being said, Misa is still slated to go first overall in the 2025 draft. The Maple Leafs packs are still in stock, where you're chasing some beautiful cards, such as a rookie Austin Matthews Young Guns, disgusting, and this release is limited to only 18 packs. Check it out down below, and as always, thanks for watching.